The Pyeongchang Olympics are 18 days away. Canada's athletes are focused, working at peak. The hype around the multi-billion dollar event has been building, but for one champion of clean competition, so is the concern. Senior Olympic Committee member Dick Pound. CBC News obtained a highly critical private letter he sent to the IOC president, who in Pound's eyes let Russia off easy for widespread state-sponsored doping. The Russian Olympic uh, Committee is suspended with immediate effect. Russia may be banned from Olympic competition, yet clean Russian athletes can compete in Pyeongchang anyway. What could be a full team Russia as long as they don't exactly call themselves that? Now, Pound doesn't see punishment. He sees bad precedent. Senior correspondent Susan Ormiston spoke with him in this national exclusive. This was Russia's triumph, their best Olympics ever ending with a pleased Putin and a proud Olympic president. Tonight we can say Russia delivered all what it had promised. But as we know, pride goeth before the fall, and it all unraveled as evidence was exhumed from Russian whistleblowers that Russians deliberately doped their way to the podium. This could not have happened and continued to happen without the knowledge of and, and either actual or implied consent of the, uh, of the state authorities. Fast forward four years. Pyeongchang's games are looming. The Russian Olympic uh, Committee is suspended with immediate effect. There's a good start. And the farther down I got in, in reading the, the account of all of this, the, the more I realized that 99% of what it was dealing with was how to get the Russians back in. Richard Pound, who's the longest serving member of the IOC, is breaking ranks with his own organization. We spoke to him in Florida about a strongly worded letter he fired off to the IOC president. A letter leaked to us, not from Pound, which questions how Russia has gotten off so lightly. They haven't atoned for or acknowledged or taken any steps whatsoever to guarantee that the same sort of thing won't happen again. Dick Pound founded the World Anti-Doping Agency, so his voice carries. I chewed on it, uh, you know, for a couple of weeks. This is wildly toned down from, uh, from my Give first Give me the crowd. wild version. No. The IOC on Friday cleared a pool of nearly 400 Russian athletes. 80% of them, it says, did not compete in Sochi. There's no final number yet, but a couple hundred Russian athletes could go to Korea, rivaling the size of Team Sochi, which was 232. There are clean uh, athletes in, uh, in uh, Russia. They must wear neutral uniforms like these and be identified only as Olympic athletes from Russia. If they win, nothing like this. No anthem, no flag, but... At the end of the games, if conditions are met, the IOC could allow them to re-emerge as the Russian team. If uh, things go swimmingly, then at the closing ceremonies, they'll be there, full Russia, full regalia, national flag and so forth, in the same games. To the outside world, what kind of a band does that look like? It simply looks as if when you're dealing with the IOC, if you deny, 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 and you happen to be a big country, just keep denying because they'll find a way to, to let the athletes from your country participate. Then there's the matter of a fine the IOC levied on Russia. In the total sum of 15 million U.S. dollars. Persistent questions about whether that fine was a deal negotiated in advance between the IOC executive and Russia in exchange for lifting its suspension. Having seen the rumors, having seen what happened, for me it looks like there had to have been a deal. We asked the IOC for its response. We are not commenting on leaked personal correspondence. Mr. Pound will, as always, be free to voice his opinions to the IOC session. The executive board will continue to take into consideration all opinions, even those who are in a minority. There will be a lot of thought and, and I think recrimination about the IOC having fumbled the ball. And I'd like to avoid that. On February 25th, as Korea's Winter Olympics wraps up, if Russia makes another proud display, anything like this at the closing ceremonies, 
Dick Pound, for one, won't watch. Well, I, I won't participate in the closing ceremony if that happens, for sure. I'm Why? Sorry. Well, just because I feel strongly enough that, that we haven't done enough. Why would I go to a closing ceremony where they haven't even been allowed to participate as Russians, but now they're marching triumphantly? No. Somebody else can go, but I'm not. Susan Ormerson joins us now. So, Susan, listening to your story and, and looking at this leaked letter that Dick Pound wrote, clearly he's worried about a backslide here. What's actually happening to ensure that only clean athletes are going to these games? Well, good question. According to the IOC, they've upped drug testing since April, up 70% over last year. So there's been some 14,000 doping tests on 6,000 athletes from over 60 countries. And the Russian winter sports athletes, they've been tested more than any other countries. Uh, 2,000 tests, double the number of other countries. So the IOC is saying clean athletes are in Russia and they're a bridge to the future rather than erecting a wall between the IOC and Russia. Clearly, Pound disagrees. But there's still some sanctioned athletes who aren't giving up, right, who still want to go to the game. Yeah, I mean, this week in Geneva, there's the uh, Court of Arbitration for Sport examining about 40 athletes, 39, who've said, look, we're appealing our suspension. We're appealing our lifetime ban and our stripped medals. They have the right to do that. Now, the process is a bit opaque. We won't know the answers till next week. It is possible, if any of those succeed, that there may be some controversial athletes in Pyeongchang. We won't know till earliest next week. It is the Olympics. Anything is possible. Susan Ormerston, thank you very much.